Aloha, everyone. Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com. Busy, busy, busy Friday evening for me following Friday session. The market sure didn't do a whole lot. My calls that I decided to play as a trade of the day, they set up after the morning dip, but there was really no trend. It was trendless. No position was taken. And the intraday session basically was reflective of how the market has looked since we started to sell off in January, basically trendless and going nowhere overall. That being said, though, today, pretty solid session. No real complaints on it. S&P 500, you can see another below average volume day as we head into the summer. I can only imagine how quiet it might get. Normally, if volume picks up in the summer, it's never good. But if we start to rally on higher volume in the summer, that'd be pretty cool. That would do the opposite of what we normally do. But heading into the summer, still consolidating. And I got to be honest, it really does appear that we'll probably just keep consolidating. And I don't think that would be bad. I think this will remain a stock picker's market and probably for the rest of the year. And if that's the case, I should continue to do well. The last two sessions have been a little rocky. I've had more end-of-day sell signals trigger than I would like to see. I've had more stops trigger intraday than I would like to see. But the vast majority are for profits and or extremely tiny losses. I'm still not taking any sizable losses whatsoever. The commissions churn up, but I'm doing this in um, – a higher dollar amount account. If, uh, if this was a smaller size account, I would never trade like this, which then brings me to then the point about the new long positions this evening. There's only two full, full sell signals. First off, QHC, uh, clear cut, confirmation closed below the 50-day moving average on above average volume while losing green bop and also closing below the low day of the session before. That's the final nail in the coffin for the confirmation close full sell signal but QHC the entry signal was here so if you did buy it with the gap up you're still leaving with a gain of right around seven percent my limit order was never filled so nothing to do the only other full sell signal BY I had three stops coming into yesterday one triggered intraday because of the gap down then I had two left, one here, one here. Those two triggered before BY collapsed, but those were the full sell signals. Now, getting to the long signals, there's a ton of them. Now, I'm taking them all because, for me, a signal is a signal is a signal. A large dollar amount per each signal, even when it's only 0.25% to 1% relative to my commission structure and the time value that I have. Remember, I live on Maui. The market closes for me right now at 10 a.m. I have from 10 a.m. all the way to whenever I go to bed around 9, 10, 11, midnight to manage all of these stocks and all of these orders. So it makes sense for me. It might not make sense for you. So you got to pick the best of the best. So if you do that, avoid these names really quick. FXF is an ETF play. Basically, it's just because a signal is a signal. But if I only had so much capital, I would not play this because you were not going to get a lot of bang for your buck. What I would thought was thinking about doing was looking at the option chain, but if volume is this small on this contract, forget it. So options aren't even... Uh, even a thing, but I am going to go long FX, 1.5% of my capital, made two scans, um, green bot for 20-day scan, and my ETF scan, limit order 95.15, first cut loss 94.88 for me, and my final cut loss will be a low here, 94.19, basically going to use this as like a hedge position against a market that doesn't do any well, but maybe the Swiss franc does well as people seek safety in a currency, so FXF, 1.5%. Also, got a long signal in PPLT. Don't trade it. You're not going to get enough bang for your buck, but I got the capital available, and since there's capital available, a signal's a signal's a signal. Only going to be 1% of my account capital, 8707 limit, and my first cut loss is right there, 8625. So I'm not giving it much room on the first half. My final cut loss will be all the way down here, 8334. But please, I don't recommend anyone touch those. And also, Roy T, this is in my perfect speculator scan. This is an oil-related name, pocket pivot point signal off the 50-day moving average, higher volume. Um, Bop surge also, I'm going along with the limit order 225. My first cut loss level is 213. Final 204, but earnings are coming up, and it's it's extended from its 20-day moving average. That's a double a double whammy. So I'm it's supposed to be a one percent long position for being perfect speculator. 
it's cut in half to 0.5% because it's extended, and then it's cut in half again between that and 0.25% to get to where I decided to put 0.375% of my account capital into this name. But don't touch it. So don't touch those three names. These are the only names you should focus on. SOI, HOLI, both industrial oil related names, USAK, a transportation related name, and then there's an ad signal, an EAST. This is a beverage stock. So once again, all these names are kind of not defensive per se, but they're not the most explosive growth kind of names. And then I also received a solid long signal in an inverse ETF ultra short semiconductor. I am already short or long the semiconductors long the SOX S short semiconductors via SOX S. I initially started a position in SOX S here and then I started to add to it. But this is the really strong buy signal clearly off the lows with the bop and volume surge. So I already have a gain. But SOX S today, you can see BOP went the other way, extended from its 50-day moving average. SSG BOP is still max green, got a pocket pivot point signal and it's on its 50-day moving average. So you can buy SOX S, but to me, a signal's a signal's a signal. I obey it. I pretend like I don't even know what the hell the company or the stock or the ETF name is. I just trade the pattern and use the proper reward risk ratio. So first off with SSG, 2% of my account capital was in my ETF scan, my green bot for 20-day scan, and my max green bot for 5-day scan. 911 limit order. Then I'm going to have multiple stop levels. 852, right there. 852. 791. 769 and 734 but that's my hedge against all these long positions now after if all of these signals fill including the other long signals that haven't filled the past week that i've tried to take like ttgt cnet enva which look at how that new long position did today um i'll be basically fully invested by fully invested that means 85 percent long 15 percent basically leverage short but i know so many people 100 percent cash here that the market starts ripping higher um, guess who's going to be glad that they obeyed their signals? Me. So getting to now the actual long signals. SOI, this is probably the highest quality long signal. This is cancel quality. was confirmed in my daily volume surge scan for stocks having the biggest surges compared to previous volume. Only 20 or 29 stocks or so. How many made that scan today, actually? 28. 28 stocks made that scan today. SOI was one of them. Also my price volume BOP surge scan. 2% of my account capital is going to this cancel quality stock. Limit order 1869. First cut loss level 1760. Final cut loss level, the last pocket pivot point signal day 1666. This is an oil name, though that sector's on fire. And my DBO, you can see how good that that one looks. Wish there were more stocks out there that looked like this that would make me really happy. As it is, there isn't. They, may, they basically look like this one. H-O-L-I, cancel quality stock, confirmed in my price volume BOP surge scan, 1.5% of my account capital, limit order 2257, first cut loss 2217, final cut loss 2175, not sure I'm going to use that first stop, probably going to have it all right there, want to give Holly room to work, I love that volume BOP and candle that it print, or volume surge, BOP surge and candle that it printed today, H-O-L-I, and then U-S-A-K, Following earnings today, big, huge intraday reversal, huge volume, a surge in BOP back to the green level, slightly higher than this level right here. This one's pretty clear cut. Was in my perfect speculator scan, confirmed in my price volume BOP surge scan. I got to admit, I didn't look it up to see if it's a canceling quality stock. If it is, it will be 2% instead of 1.5%. Limit order, 25.19, my one and only stop level, or excuse me, I'm wrong. First stop level, 24.33. I decided at first I was just going to have one stop level, 21.96. But if I go up to 2%, especially, you better believe I'll just be using the candle before lows at 24.33, then 21.96. And the last long signal, EAST. I really like this stock chart. Man, if this thing could have kept max green bop all the way till today with the pocket pivot point signal and volume would have been above average with that max green bop, this is what I'm looking for. The consolidation on low volume right to the 50-day moving average, the strong move, the strong bullish candle print right off the moving average with a pocket pivot point signal. 
like I said, max green bop, a volume surge, you'll know that that's a chart pattern I like, but like a lot, not love, because the only way to love a chart is to not see any of this junky red bop in this chart. Um, even the tall red bars are fine because there's not too many of them. This is the problem, that red there. But this pattern right here, you get like a strong move like that, a consolidation with that quiet volume, a few pocket pivot point signals or a couple, and a max green bop, you'll know I love the pattern. But as it is, you know, it's, it's just a good pattern. So SOI, that one's relatively safe, higher quality. HOLI, relatively safe, higher quality. ROY2, risky, higher quality, but risky. USAK, relatively safe, higher quality, but you must use that first stop level. If you're only using this bar low here or this bar low here, it becomes higher quality risky. And then east, one, two, three, four, and then east, excuse me, high quality, but risky, super thin, perfect speculator quality. Wish it just had more green in it, but in any other stock that's more liquid, um, definitely um, a pattern I like, but because it's so thin, yeah, it's not that safe. SSG, yeah, you use my limit orders. This is a safe hedge. If you're too long here and you need to get some exposure to the short side in case the market does decide to have a summer sell-off, this is probably one to pick up. And then PPLT, FXF, beyond too safe. All right, everyone, video is running long again. God, I cannot make these things under 10 minutes, guys. I apologize for the length of the videos. I feel like they're a little too long. Um, view views have been going down. I'm going to try to shorten them up, but if you don't want me to shorten them up, just let me know if you want me to go in detail like I have been. Um, and on the last market pullback, really quick, so let's make this video longer. I just want to remind everybody, this pullback right here, okay? Is, looks similar to this pullback, but it's way different. The depth isn't nearly as much, and there, before this happened, all that choppiness happened. Now, it's possible that all that choppiness then leads to something like this, and if it does, I want to remind everybody, at this market low right here in January, February, I was only tracking about 30 stocks. I was long slightly under 18 names and was almost 70% cash. Still, though, I was over 30% long, so you know my signal still worked because I remained long stocks that then were, of course, holding well above their lows. So they must have been trending higher or else I wouldn't be 30% long, and then they moved higher. But right here, following all of this, I'm still tracking over 200 names. I'm still long well over 100 stocks. Do the chart patterns look that great? No. But I find it strange for a market that nobody's really long and everybody's really worried about that summer breakdown that I've got so many names holding up and so many long positions I'm still long simply because they're not hitting my rising trailing stops. If they're not hitting my rising trailing stops, that means they're moving sideways or moving higher. Why should I sell them? I don't. So we'll see what happens. The old market axiom is sell a man, go away. But maybe this time it's breakout in May, stay, and new highs are on their way. I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you in the chat room Monday morning. Once again, sorry for a longer video lesson. I'm going to really go out of my way to try to shorten these up. Aloha.